Now that our design is ready, we can begin to install our system. But before you start to dig, there are a couple of very important items to take care of. First, check your local codes for any requirements before you cut into your property's service line. And second, it's very important that you have your local utility companies mark the location of all buried cables, pipes, or gas lines on your property. Trenching can be done by hand, but using a trenching machine is much easier and faster. Trenchers can be rented by the hour, day, or week from a rental equipment dealer. The rental service will show you how to operate the machine properly and safely. To start, place a marker or flag at every sprinkler location according to your design layout. Then use string or paint to indicate where you'll need to trench. Dig trenches 8 to 12 inches deep. When the trenching is complete, lay out the pipe and fittings. For this property, we'll be using PVC pipe. The next step is to tie into the main service line running from the water meter to your house. First, shut off the water supply at your meter. Tapping into the service line is a critical step. Depending on the type of material, there are several ways to proceed. This may be the one step you pass off to someone with more experience. In fact, some local codes require that it be completed by a licensed professional. Again, it's important to check your local codes before you start. The most convenient way to cut this PVC service line is with a PVC pipe cutter. For this project, we're going to install a slip-type compression tee. Remove a small section of pipe, enough to allow the tee to slide on. Be careful not to take out too much or the tee fitting will not be wide enough to cover the remaining gap. Next, install a manual sprinkler system shutoff valve. This new shutoff valve will allow you to turn off the water to the sprinkler system without affecting the water supply to your home. We prepare the valve by installing threaded fittings. Then we can measure and cut a length of PVC pipe and glue it directly to the fittings. To assure a good seal, Use a piece of sandpaper to take off any rough edges caused by the cutting. When you're ready to start gluing the parts together, follow the directions on the product. With most brands of glue, you'll first brush on a primer to clean and prepare the pipe surface and the inside of the fitting. Now apply the glue lightly to the inside of the fitting and on the outside of the pipe. Slip the pipe into the fitting and give it a quarter turn. How long you hold it depends on the weather, but 10 or 15 seconds should be plenty. Again, prep and glue the outside of the pipe and the inside of the fitting. Twist a quarter turn and hold to let the glue set. For those who live in a colder climate, you'll also need the ability to winterize your system. In these areas, after turning off the sprinkler system supply, any water left standing in the pipes could freeze, causing serious damage. So it's important to install some additional fittings that provide a way to evacuate any remaining water in the system. For further details, refer to the winterization section at www.rainbird.com. From our new system shutoff valve, continue to build the supply line. Also, after shutting off the new valve, you can restore the water supply to your home. If your design calls for a backflow prevention device, install it next. If you're using anti-siphon valves, then just continue assembling pipe to the first valve manifold. Now run the controller wire from the timer to the valve manifold location.
place the wire into the same trench as the supply pipe. To help protect them, tape the wires to the bottom of the pipe. Notice we've chosen wire that has more strands than actually required. It'll make it easier to expand your system if needed. Next to come, the valve manifold. A valve manifold is simply several valves located next to each other that are fed from one shared water supply line. As you measure and cut the pieces for the manifold, allow about three inches of pipe between the fittings. This will reduce the chances of a bad connection and also leave room to work if you need to take the valves apart for cleaning or repair. With all the pieces lined up, we can begin to build our manifold. When using threaded components, you can use Teflon tape, but don't use pipe dope. Carefully thread the fitting onto the valve until hand tight. Then use a wrench to finish tightening the fittings, but not more than one and a half additional turns. This applies to any type of threaded fitting, not just valves. By the way, when installing any type of valve, make sure the water supply goes in the inlet side. As always, before you glue, get rid of any rough edges. Brush on a primer to clean and prepare the pipe surface and the inside of the fitting. Now apply the glue lightly to the inside of the fitting and to the outside of the pipe. Then slip the pipe into the fitting and give it a quarter turn. As you add fittings, be aware of how they must sit to allow the manifold to lay correctly. Here's another tip. Add an additional section to the valve manifold and cap it. This will allow you to add valves later if you need to expand your system. Follow this same procedure until all the parts are assembled. Local codes mandated we install a separate backflow prevention device. This led us to go with inline valves for the zones. They'll be installed below grade and be covered with a valve box for additional protection.